In this video, we're going to talk about moles and solutions. So moles are not the little animals that live underground. Moles are a chemistry term that we use. Let's talk about some counting units. This will get us thinking about chemistry moles. So hopefully you remember that a pair is two, so like a pair of shoes or a pair of mittens. A trio would be three. A quartet would usually be four. And then a six pack of something like, say, Diet Dr. Pepper would be six. Uh, a dozen is 12. When we buy eggs or donuts, we usually buy dozens. Sometimes you get a baker's dozen. Um, I think some of the local places will give you an extra. It's 13 when you buy a baker's dozen. A score is 20. You guys remember Abraham Lincoln's speech. And then there's something called a gross, which is a dozen dozen, so 144. So those are some counting units that we're familiar with. Whenever I'm talking about a dozen of something, I'm always talking about 12. And so the mole kind of works the same way. So you did this Titan activity, and we had to figure out how many Cheerios were in a box without counting them. And so what you did when you put your heads together with your group is you realized that if you knew the mass of the Cheerios in the box and you knew the mass of just one Cheerio, you could figure out how many Cheerios were in the box. And hopefully you took an average of the 20 Cheerios you were allowed to use because when you look at those Cheerios, they're very different from each other. So using 20 gives you a nice uh, picture of what an average Cheerio would weigh. So we created this counting unit for convenience and we called it a Titan. And that's a really similar process to what we do for molecules. The reason we do that is molecules are tiny. When we're dealing with chemistry most of the time, now some chemists deal with molecules individually, but typically when we're talking about chemists, we're dealing with amounts that we can see. So we need to use a counting unit that allows us to deal with even drops. Drops have billions of molecules in them. So molecules are really tiny, so we need this giant counting unit so we can count them. And so we've developed this counting unit for molecules called the mole. It's abbreviated MOL. I know, not the most helpful thing, but uh, it still works. And we define it in terms of two different units. We De define the mass of atoms in terms of AMU, atomic mass units, and we also define it in the masses of things that are convenient to measure, such as grams. Okay, so let's define the mole in a similar way to the Titan. We know that the mass of one atom in AMU is equal numerically to the mass of one mole of atoms in grams, and we know that one AMU has a molar mass of I'm sorry, 1 AMU has a mass of 1.66054 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms. So let's see if we can figure out how many things are in one mole. It's the same process as the Titan activity. So we know the mass of one mole, we know the mass of one atom of carbon, and then we can figure out the how many atoms are in that. So let's take a look. So think about our average mass of the one carbon atom. So we know that the average mass of one carbon atom is going to be 12.01 AMU. And then we know that the mass of one mole of carbon atoms is 12.01 grams. So remember, same number, two different units, so just like the Titan activity. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take 12.01 AMU and we're gonna convert that to grams, okay? Because we've gotta have them both in the same unit to do uh, math with them. So 12.01 AMU, and we're going to put, remember when we're doing factor label unit conversions, AMU on the bottom to cancel. And we know how many kilograms, so kilograms on the top from our conversion factor. And from the other slide, we know that one AMU has a mass of 1.66054 times 10 to the negative 27th kilograms. And then we need to go ahead and convert it from kilograms to grams. So kilograms on the bottom grams on the top. Remember that kilo has scientific notation of 10 to the third, so that goes with our base unit, which is grams. Okay, 
and that's the number of grams in one kilogram. So punch that into your calculator. I got 1.994 times 10 to the negative 23rd grams, and that's the mass of one carbon atom. All right, so if we know the mass of one mole of carbon atoms, we know that that's 12.01 grams. Then we know that if we divide it by the mass of one carbon atom, 1.994 times 10 to the negative 23rd, and that's the number of grams per atom of carbon, then we are going to put that into our calculator. Go ahead and pause and do that. And I got 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of carbon. Okay, remember our grams will cancel and we'll be left with atoms of carbon. And you can do that for any element on the periodic table. All right, so let's talk a little bit more about these moles. So one mole is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd items. It always is, just like a dozen donuts is always 12. And so if we have a mole of donuts, how many is that? 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. I think we'd have Krispy Kreme running, wouldn't we? Uh, a mole of quizzes. I'm sure you feel like you've taken a mole of quizzes by now. That would be 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd quizzes. Mole of dollar bills. Wouldn't we all like to have that? 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd dollar bills. Now, let's talk about that. Do you think you could spend a mole of dollar bills? How long would it take you? Um, let's figure out how many years it would take and assume you could spend a million dollars for every second of your life. So go ahead and pause and try to do that and see if you come up with the right answer. I'm gonna do it and you can come back and check in with me when you get yours done. All right, so we start with one mole of dollar bills all right, and we want to go ahead and set up a, a unit conversion. We know that in, we're going to put mole of dollar bills here, and this will just be our how many dollars we have. We know that one mole is equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd dollars, and it's equal to that many of anything. It doesn't matter what unit we're using. All right, and then we know that we can spend $1 million every second, so we're going to convert from dollars to seconds. And when we say uh, per second or every second, that's going to be every one second, you can spend a million dollars. So that's one million. You could also put one times 10 to the sixth there, depending on how comfortable you are with exponents. Makes it a little easier. All right, so we need to go from seconds to minutes. We know that one minute equals 60 seconds. And then we need to go from minutes to hours. So we know that one hour is 60 minutes. And then we need to go from hours to days. So hours on the bottom to cancel, days on top. We know that one day has 24 hours. And then in a year, we know that, let's put days on the bottom to cancel, years on top, that's the unit that we need. In one year, there are 365 0.25 days, that takes into account leap year, so that's an average. Punch that into your calculator if you haven't already. I got 1.91 times 10 to the 10th years, or 19 billion years, roughly. We all wish we had that money, but boy, I don't think we'd have anywhere to put it. All right, let's look at it a little bit further. Could one mole of basketballs cover the earth? Absolutely, it would be 50 miles deep. How big would one mole of grapefruits be? About the size of the earth if they were all pushed together. Think about how many human cells are on earth. There are over six billion people. So about one mole of human cells. How many moles of sand grains are in the Sahara Desert? About two moles. So when we talk about these counting units, we're talking about just huge, huge numbers. So ask me tomorrow in class and I'll show you the volume of one mole of water molecules. All right, so remember how we determine the number of things in a mole. 
we used carbon. We said that the average mass of one carbon atom is that number from the periodic table, 12.01, with the unit of AMU. And the mass of one mole of carbon atoms is 12.01, same number from the periodic table, with a mass of grams. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to use these to convert from one thing to another. All right? I'll see you in class.